Good morning, good afternoon, good day, good to see you all. Uh, good to see me. Look at the surroundings I'm in today. Usually I record these at home, but I'm here at my St. Andrew's office today. Pastor Doug here with you for another midweek moment. Uh, we're studying our neighbor's faith during the summer sermon series. And uh, we started with the Roman Catholic Church last Sunday for St. Andrew's Lutheran and Faith Lutheran in Avon. I say good morning, God bless you, God be with you, and all the good things of God be yours today. If the Roman Catholic Church is the largest denomination, the Jewish faith tradition can claim the oldest. The Jewish faith tradition can claim the oldest. Now, five, 10 minutes here on a midweek moment, even a sermon series can't possibly get into the depth of the Jewish faith tradition, which is up as our second uh, faith to, to follow. But just a, an overview, uh, much of what I gathered comes from Our Neighbor's Faith, a book by Augsburg Fortress, which is our Lutheran publishing house, uh, and the Jewish faith tradition. You know, much can be said, but uh, I have, um, when I was on uh, an intern at Bethel Lutheran in Avon, uh, we were, uh, the confirmation class came and attended uh, a Jewish worship service at the Indianapolis Hebrew Congregation up on North Meridian Street. We were uh, guests there, and we had a uh, service um, uh, together there with the others of the congregation and experience what it was like to have a, a Jewish worship service at a synagogue on a Friday evening. In the Jewish faith tradition, they believe, you know, that the Sabbath is an important uh, day during the week, which begins Friday at sundown and goes till Saturday at sundown. So many times their worship will be Friday evening or Saturday morning at their synagogues. And we were treated well and given a tour of the facility. What I remember most about that Jewish worship experience was uh, a couple things. One is their their bulletin, the the guidebook we used, went from left to right, as goes the Hebrew language. We were reading from left to right. Of course, we didn't understand any of it. A second thing I noticed is the use of a cantor. A cantor is much like what we do at church with, uh, it's a similar as to someone who sings uh, the liturgy, if you will. And a cantor is very common in Jewish worship. And they carry also along with the rabbi some leadership authority of that synagogue. Uh, but I remember the cantor and the woman singing and singing powerfully through a lot of the liturgy. And then probably the most significant thing was the use of the Torah, T-O-R-A-H, Torah, Torah, the first five books of the Bible. Uh, they read a portion of that during the synagogue worship, but it was taken out of a, I don't know the technical term for it, but, but a kind of a closet, if you will, uh, up on the altar and brought out, brought up the aisle, and people reached out to try to touch this Torah or Torah, and then eventually got back around to the rabbi uh, who read it. So they got it out of its holding place, treated it with reverence. As it went up the aisle, congregants reached out to try to touch it. As it went by, there's such great reverence for those books of the Bible. In the Jewish faith tradition, they don't have a doctrinal view of Jesus. Um, it's a monotheistic uh, belief system in the Jewish faith, a belief in the absolute unity and singularity of God. And it re therefore, they regard the worship of a person as a form of idolatry. Therefore, considering Jesus a deity or to be God in the Jewish faith tradition would be forbidden, for like forbidden fruit, if you will. Um, in Judaism, uh, they share a lineage to Abraham in the Bible. Uh, they believe in that Bible. Um, they are centered on the covenant with God that's made in the Bible in Genesis with Abraham. They believe that their work then is to keep God's laws and seek a holiness in every aspect of their life. 
um, faith is less important to Judaism than it is the practice of that faith. The term Jew and Judaism are relatively modern terms. They can't be applied to any scriptural description of Hebrews, Israelites, or Judeans. The term Jew or Judaism are relatively modern, and those can't be applied to the Bible's description of Hebrews or Israelites or Judean. doesn't always mean the same thing. There's approximately 14 million uh, Jews or Jewish faith believers in the world. About 5 million of those are here in the United States, and then about 6 million are in Israel alone. So the United States and Israel hold about three-fourths of the world's Jewish population uh, in their countries. They, um, has a, they have a rich uh, weekly annual calendar in Judaism. The holiest day is the Jewish calendar is the Shabbat, S-H-A-B-B-A-T, Shabbat or Sabbath, which begins Friday night at sundown and concludes Saturday at sundown. The Sabbath home meal is understood to be a very significant family and a communal, communal experience. And synagogue services are usually held on Friday or Saturday, like I said before. They believe in the Torah, which was the whole of the laws given to the Israelites at Sinai. They believe they must follow God's laws, which govern daily life. It began about 4,000 years ago with the Hebrew people in the Middle East. They believe in the Ten Commandments. And today in our world, you know, there's about three different basic groups of Jewish people who have a different understanding of the interpretation of the Torah. So much like Lutherans are Missouri Synod or the National Association of Lutheran Churches or ELCA. In Jewish faith belief, there's the Orthodox Jews. They believe that all the practices in the Torah are practical to obey and must be obeyed without question. That's the Orthodox Jew. Conservative and Reformed Jews believe that the ancient laws and the practices have to be interpreted for modern life with the inclusion of contemporary sources and with more concern with community practice than rituals. And the Reformed Jews also allow everyone to set together. In the Orthodox Jewish faith, men will be on one side, women on the other. In these others, the conservative and the Reform, they allow men and women to set together, and both the Hebrew and local languages are used in the time of worship. Uh, so much like any other tradition, there's some division uh, among uh, the Jewish faith. The uh, synagogues that you see around, uh, and again, I, and there's not that many in Indianapolis, but I know of the Indianapolis Hebrew co congregation on the north side, but they're self-governed in the Jewish faith tradition. They don't have a, a central office like we would in Chicago for the ELCA. Uh, they're self-governed. Uh, the rabbi um, is the leader of that synagogue, followed by uh, the cantor. The rabbi and the cantor uh, are the leaders. The word rabbi comes out of the Hebrew R-A-V, which means master, master. Uh, so the rabbi, and they involve themselves just like I do in regard to pastoral care and um, administrating the, the congregation and that kind of thing. So that's what rabbis do. Um, so just a little overview of some of the things about the Jewish faith uh, tradition, just to give you a little flavor uh, so that you, on Sunday we'll be able to go into more detail. I just wanted to leave you with another quote I had um, the word synagogue and temple are used interchangeably in the Jewish faith tradition. Neither are Hebrew terms. Synagogue comes from the Greek, meaning bringing together. Synagogue comes from the Greek, meaning bringing together. And temple comes from the Latin templum, which means uh, the same kind of thing, coming together. So, uh, many communities, the temple may be a more conservative, while the reform congregation is called a synagogue in terms of the places where they worship. There is much to be do to dive into uh, in your own study. When I uh, complete my study and prep for this week, I'll put a handout together and leave it on the table of both churches that you can have on your way out and hope that that's uh, uh, something that's helpful to you.
So I invite you to go ahead and look that up if you want to know more information. And I um, will have a resource for you when we get together on Sunday. Just very quickly, I didn't prepare well, did I? But I think you can. Go, there's um, Living Judaism, A Complete Guide to Their Beliefs is by Wayne Dosick, D-O-S-I-C-K, came out in 2010. Um, and so there's, for each of those different divisions of Jewish uh, belief, there's websites, and I'll write those out and have them on, uh, available for you on Sunday. Um, and uh, I know that we pray for our Jewish brothers and sisters as we study our neighbor's faith together. This is just a brief, quick look at it, an overview, if you will, and hope that whets your appetite to dig in and do some more research on your own. And and certainly I know that the Indianapolis Hebrew congregation welcomes visitors and groups if they, if we want to organize, you know, between the two churches and maybe, uh, you know, rent a small van or a bus or something and go, we could. Uh, it's up to us. So I just thought I'd leave that with you. I wish you well. Thanks for listening in and God be with you till we meet again.